Hello there beautiful humans, I'm RidersDX and welcome to my channel where today we're going to talk about every single fact that we know about Sonic Superstar so far. I have 15 total facts here. Hey guys, Dave here with a little editor's note. There's actually 40 facts total because while editing this video, even more information came out. So enjoy. And now this is probably going to get longer as Summer Games Fest keeps moving along. So let's just go ahead and get this stuff out there right now. And number one, Sonic Superstars is a fully 2.5D rendered platformer based off of the classic Sonic games, as you can see from the footage on screen right now. It looks absolutely incredible, absolutely breathtaking. I love the art style. I love how the characters look. It looks like a slightly updated version of Generations. I love everything about it. And number two, according to the website, this game is being held by Sonic Team and not the team behind Sonic Mania. But then according to a recent interview with VGC, Izuka confirmed the game is actually being headed by a studio named Arzes, which is owned by Naoto Oshima, one of Sonic's original creators. Sonic Team Japan is involved to build the game though. And number three, we have a few locations in the game that have been reviewed so far. So all all these locations that we've seen are part of the North Star Islands that Sonic and his friends are traveling to. I had to take a second take because I almost got that confused with the Kronos Islands of Sonic Frontiers. The first area we see is probably the beginning level which is a seaside hill like area that's interlooped with ruins and waterfalls. We also see a sunset version of this later on in the trailer, probably a different act. It just seems like a commagulation of all the different first levels that we've seen in different Sonic games and it just looks gorgeous. The next area we get to see is like a forest area which reminds me a lot of Green Forest from Sonic Adventure 2, specifically because of the grinding and the vines. Oh, by the way, grinding is in this game. Isn't that really great? The number 3, probably the most odd level that we've seen so far, is like this virtual reality like area. And what's interesting about this is that in this clip over here, you can see that the Crab Bandit has a bit of a funkier look than it usually does. It makes me think of like Legos actually. Apparently this is a throwback to the 16-bit era. Later on in the trailer, you can actually see the characters adopt the same art style themselves. So this definitely seems like a very weird level that I can't wait to check out. And number four, we've got information on playable characters. So not only do you get to play as Sonic, you get to play as Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. And they all have their own special abilities as well. Tails of his flying, Knuckles of his climbing, and Amy just busting through rocks with her hammer. So badass. And number five, not only do we have four playable characters, but we also get four player co-op throughout the entire campaign according to the website. The website also specifies that the game has drop in and drop out local co-op. So it remains to be seen if there's going to be online functionality. I really hope there will be because I think that's something that could really prolong the life of this game because co-op in a game like this seems like a lot of fun and for it to be limited to just local co-ops would be a little bit disappointing. And number six, something I found really interesting is that Amy is rocking her classic look over here, which actually isn't that surprising given the fact that all the other characters are as well. It's just that Amy's look is significantly different from her modern look. However, if you go on the website sonicsuperstars.com and you register for the newsletter, you will get a code for an alternate Amy skin when the game releases, which is basically going to be a modern Amy skin. So if you like a modern Amy better, then they have you covered. At number 7, we did get to see some new Bandix here, a lot of some ones that we already recognize. And so some of the ones I spotted over here is a torpedo-like Bandix that's blasting towards Sonic over here. It almost looks like a pig's head actually, so maybe that's the animal it's based off of. You can also spot a bat-like Bandix over here as the trailer zooms into it. And then you also see this like circular purple Bandix here. I'm not sure what it does, but it does look pretty mean. And number 8, we've got to see a few of the different bosses as well. The first one I'm not actually sure is a boss, but I'd be really disappointed if it wasn't. You can see this gigantic shark bandit, which reminds me a lot of the whales that you run away from in Sonic Adventure for instance. So if we get to fight something like that, that'd be really cool. You also see this purple wasp-like character that you're fighting with a friend over here. And then we also see one of Eggman's big robots, reminds me of the final boss in the Death Egg in Sonic 2. So it's kind of like reminiscent of that. And number 9, the trailer and the website do make a point to mention that the Chaos Emeralds are set to play a bigger role in this game, allowing to do many more abilities that we haven't seen before, and we got to see some of those abilities here. So one of them for instance is that Sonic and his friends can turn into jellyfish, and I guess fly throughout the stage? Um, okay, this seems kind of odd, but I'm interested. There's also an ability where Sonic turns like a bright blue color and is able to run on walls and also jump up waterfalls. So I guess he gets to defy gravity with this ability. And then one of the most intriguing ones here that I don't think I'd ever expect to see in a Sonic game is that Sonic duplicates himself and just rush attacks Eggman. And so that's going to add a lot more chaos in this I'd imagine. 
From what I can tell, these do seem kind of situation based, so I don't know if there are abilities that you can use at all times or if it's something that you can just use at a certain time once you get the power up. And so it's going to be interesting to see how they design levels based off these abilities. And number 10, special stages seem to be back but in a couple different forms. So the first form that we see that I think is a special stage, though I could be wrong, is this giant 3D area where you see Sonic as he grapples to various points of the environment, collecting rings and avoiding hazards. This is really interesting because this is a fully 3D rendered environment and Sonic is moving in a 3D space. So this game is not exclusively 2D gameplay. There's going to be some 3D gameplay here, which I guess is not a new thing for special stages, but this definitely seems like a brand new kind of special stage that we've never seen before. We've also seen some special stages that are based roughly on the Sonic 1 stages. I really hope they're better than the Sonic 1 stages. Fun little tidbit here, but Sonic Stadium was able to find a screenshot over here where you can see the entrance to the special stage in one of the levels. Very interesting. That just tells us that you're going to enter the special stages the same way that you would in most classic Sonic games. Perhaps you collect a bunch of rings and then like the portal appears or you find the portal in the middle of the stage. At number 11, this game is coming out in every possible imaginable console you can think of this fall of 2023. So the PlayStation consoles, the Microsoft consoles, Nintendo Switch, PC, it's coming out in all of it. At number 12, Dr. Eggman is back as you could see earlier, but he's teaming up with some interesting faces. One of them is Fang the Sniper as teased at the end of the trailer. This is something I was really excited about in particular. I'm really glad to see him here. Then the other one is a mysterious new adversary that we don't know anything about besides the fact that they exist. At number 13, well, I actually kind of lied to be honest because we do know that this brand new adversary is being designed by none other than Naoto Oshima, the original character designer of Sonic. You might remember him recently from having worked on Balan Wonderland. Or maybe not, it's your choice. At number 14, and I caught this right before I was going to record this video thanks to Dave, so thanks so much Dave, but according to a very suspicious tweet, Ian Flynn is not involved in designing the game, but with a knowing smile. So this could mean one of two things. One, he's not involved with the actual gameplay, but he's helming a story for the game itself. Or two, he's not involved in the game at all, but he could be helming an accompanying comic or short to explain the plot. I would bet on a YouTube animated short because he's basically done that for the past like who knows how many Sonic games at this point, like Team Sonic Racing, Sonic Colors Ultimate, Sonic Frontiers. He's done it for quite a few Sonic games, so it seems very plausible that that's going to be the case here. Here at number 15, which I think some people will have some very mixed opinions on, but this game does list at a triple A retail price of $60. And so I'm not really going to complain about the price yet because I don't know the contents of the game. What I will say is I hope that this price means that the game's scope is going to be much bigger than Sonic Mania was, which by the looks of it, it already is, because I think the really interesting thing about this brand new title is the fact that it's not just a 2D nostalgia bait game, it's a game that does take some nostalgic elements, but it's trying to create these brand new experiences with them. So all these different levels, bringing in all these characters, local co-op, like that's such an insane thing for a 2D Sonic game. I'm really excited to see how that's going to work out. Sonic Superstars is not just aiming to be a classic nostalgia based Sonic game. It's aiming to be something new in the same way that Sonic Frontiers was. Not to as great of an extent per se, but still quite ambitious and I'm really looking forward to see how this game shapes out to be in the future. So I thought it was done at 15, but then I realized that at number 16, Summer Game Fest has an in-person event which includes a playable demo of Superstars. So one of the first things we got to see from the playable demo was a startup screen which features the classic Sonic in a ring getup, but this time he's joined by Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. And so this is a really, really great way to introduce the game. Number 17, we also learned that the game has a one minute animated intro sequence, very similar in style to the one for Sonic Mania, and it showcases a bunch of the features I've noted about the game so far, including the Emerald Power where Sonic duplicates himself. At number 18, we also get a quick look at the new foe that Eggman is teaming up with in this clip, which is some kind of like orange robot thingy, looks like another robot that Eggman is um, controlling and such. I don't really know who this is, but um, it looks adorable. Bonus fact, according to an interview with Izuka-san, this little guy here is known as Trip because he trips a lot. Very clever name. That's all I'll say so far. At number 19, IGN actually conducted an interview with Izuka who talked about some very important tidbits that we haven't heard about. The first one though, and I think the most important one is that there will be no repeated locations in this game. That's right, there's gonna be no green hill zone, no chemical plant zone, 
every single level in this game is completely different and new and original, and they made that a point in this interview. At number 20, Izuka also mentioned that the team was very careful in making sure they replicated the physics and feel of the original Sonic games to a T. This is also one of the very first things that you hear in the interview, so I can tell that they knew that this was going to be something they really had to prove to people that they were going to ace in the hole because obviously, I don't want to say it, but this game does kind of remind me a bit of Sonic 4 in terms of like a lot of the different things that they're trying over here, but we've already seen some really great step forwards that make this seem like it's going to be a much better game than Sonic 4, and the fact that they're really focused on making sure the physics are in tune with what the experience should be is something I'm really, really excited about. Number 21, he also revealed that there will be no voiceover or a lot of text in the story. It's going to be told in a very similar manner to the Genesis games through watching the characters interact, which I would expect nothing less, honestly. This really seems like the kind of game where that seems the most appropriate. At number 22, we got a bunch of different gameplay videos thanks to Sonic Stadium, and one of the ones I saw was this gameplay video of the sunset level, and we can see that Sonic is equipped with a shield in the beginning of this footage, confirming that items are going to be returning to this game. At number 22, you can see when Sonic uses the Emerald's power to travel up this waterfall, on the bottom right is a timer for how long it will last, and so these powers obviously can't last forever, there's going to be some limit to them to make it more challenging, and so that looks like the limit for this power in particular. Number 24, at the bottom here over here, I can see some kind of like golden token that you can collect. I do wonder what these are for, maybe unlocking different extras perhaps. But if we head to number 25, we can go over to the special stage footage over here that Sonic Stadium captured. And this is of the 3D area that I mentioned earlier, and so this is really interesting because we get to see this brand new special stage format that I don't think any other Sonic game has really done. And so the goal of these 3D ones is to collect medals, which funnily are the exact same ones that I saw in the last point. And so maybe these medals in the normal levels grant access to these special stages, or maybe the medals in the special stages and the medals you collect in normal levels will add up to unlock something. I don't really know, but it looks like they definitely have some kind of weird purpose considering the fact that they are in both the regular levels and in the special stages. And number 26 over here, this looks like some kind of tutorial portion of the game that tells you how to use the Emerald Powers. And so you can see in this clip that you can select the Emerald Power you want to use in this little Emerald Power wheel. So basically that means that you can use almost any of the Emerald Powers whenever you choose. These powers can get replenished at Star Post if you run out of juice. And so that's interesting because it doesn't mean it's necessarily like scripted or fixed as to when you can use each power. So that should make for some more interesting gameplay if it works out well. At number 27, IGN Japan posted 10 minutes of footage of what we now know to be called Speed Jungle. At number 28, a really random detail noticed about this level is that there are some points here where Sonic can grab onto these set of three blocks and I guess they give you rings in return, which is something I would expect in like a casino-like level. But to be honest, as I was watching this footage, there are a lot of mechanics here that do match the casino level aesthetic, like these little fast tunnels that Sonic can travel through, there's like little bumpers on the walls that launch you up. I mean, there's a lot of different things here inspired by casinos, but it's a jungle, so it looks weird but really cool at the same time. Number 29, at this point for some reason you can see Tails is platforming through the background. Perhaps the game will be filled with fun little quirks like this, and this is probably like another method as to telling the story of Sonic Superstars as Izuka mentioned before. At number 30, we got to see this wasp boss in action, along the debut of a Big the Cat inspired Flicky. I love this thing. It looks so cuddly and adorable. It's huge, but it's adorable. Number 31, at the end of the first act, you can hear the game tallying up a score. It looks like this footage was recorded without a HUD, but it looks like there is a scoring system at the end, which makes ranking very, very likely in this game. Although a lot of the classic games didn't give you actual grades, and so we'll see if we get grades or not in this game. At number 32, in the second act of Speed Jungle, there are some ultra dark sections that are lit up by a transparent butterfly, which again is another example of how this game seems to be doing a lot to make these levels fun and interesting with different mechanics that are original. At number 33, we also get to see another boss in this level. So in the second act, you look at this robot-like boss that honestly just looks like a giant egg or a giant boulder, you know, whichever one you want to get, but this is the one that Eggman is controlling in particular, and so it looks kind of deadly, I guess. At number 34, at the very end of this footage, you can see that Fang and the new character working for Robotnik have a bit of an interaction over here, as it looks like they were trying to set up a trap for Sonic, but it failed to be activated. And so, this is another example of some of the storytelling methods that Izuka was talking about, so I'm curious to see just how much of this is going to be in this game. 
At number 35, Izuka did an audio interview during this weekend where he revealed that the cloning ability that we saw earlier is referred to as Avatar. I'm really interested in seeing what other names for the other powers we have going forward. At number 36, music wise, Izuka confirmed in an interview with VGC that Jun Sin Yu is composing the music primarily for the game, but others are involved in the game as well, including T Lopes. At number 37, I found this to be an interesting tidbit, but Izuka actually commented on the fact that Christian Whitehead with Headcanon are not involved in this game, as they were originally in talks in making a successor to Sonic Media, but those talks fell through, which led to Superstars. Take with that information as you will. At number 38, according to Sonic Stadium, who posted this really in-depth preview of their experience with the game, depending on what character you choose, you get a different intro sequence. So if you choose Sonic and Tails, for instance, you start off at the tornado chasing Fang, who has captured a very large Fleeky, presumably for Dr. Eggman. If you play the game as Amy, Amy is petting some of the small animal friends when she sees Sonic's plane in pursuit of Fang and she decides to chase after her hero. If you play as Knuckles, he's chilling next to the Master Emerald when he also spots the tornado. So basically, all four for the same premise, they're all trying to chase Fang and Eggman and stop whatever they're up to. At number 39, I did talk about some of the unique abilities that the characters have in this game, but we have a little bit more clarity on Amy's special abilities. So her special ability is a double jump, and if the jump button is held down when she lands, it can be followed up by her running forward and smashing her hammer, destroying any bandits or breakable objects in her path as I described earlier. At number 40, this is extremely fascinating, but there seems to be a third type of special stage they encountered, here's what they said. It was a surprise as I didn't see it when other players were playing the demo. It seems if you go fast enough, you can cause a warp to appear that you can jump into. This leads to a short level of you bouncing forward and collecting rings until it ends, and it seems that you're now on a different part of the zone. I think. My memory is a little hazy on that part. Fascinating. We haven't seen any footage of this yet, so I'm really curious to see this in action. It kind of sounds like the warping mechanism from Sonic CD, but a little bit different, so hopefully we hear more about this soon. Let me know what you think about Sonic Superstars in the comment section below, and if you want to learn about what are some things I'd love to see in a Sonic Frontier successor, then check out the video in the top left corner. Alright, thanks so much everyone. This is Riders, riding out.